so the project I'm going to talk about today is, um, well, I ha ha it's kind of a desperate situation that I enjoy so much. So I'm doing, I'm doing architectural visualization, which means that we are working in extremely tight timelines uh, on actually a very difficult project with people with enormous egos. So <laughs> all in all, it's like the deadliest combination of, uh, well, the deadliest combination, like a poisoning cocktail. Uh, and the project I'm going to talk about today is um, done for um, the Office of Urbanization at the GSD at Harvard. So kind of serious people. Um, the, the idea was to do a two minute animation in five days, receiving the documents, I mean, receiving the documents, preparing the documents, rendering, uh, and delivering, doing the music, editing, post-process, I mean, everything in five days and for free. Uh, and uh, I think that it is uh, a remarkable way of uh, showing how Cinema 4D is working well when you are into tight deadlines. Um, and then I will show you uh, the, the, the second phase that was actually doing images uh, in exactly the same condition. So it's, it, it's going to be a live demo. Um, there, let's hope for the best. So the, the, the idea is that first I will show you the, the brief quickly, so it's, uh, you see it's very official, very serious kind of work. Um, so I'm going a bit quickly until there are images that will talk to you a little. So it's lots of complicated words with a lot of silence. Uh, and this is where, because I said yes before knowing exactly what the project would be. And the project turned out to be this gigantic towers that are covered with greenery in the middle of Seoul, knowing that I have no pictures of Seoul, no 3D model of Seoul, this kind of model to start working with. And just like very light imagery on how it looks like. So needless to say, this is, this is the right moment to freak out totally. Uh, I was more freaking out at this moment than right now. Now I feel kind of confident into what I'm, yeah. And I know that for serious people as well, which is not helping. I mean. So that was the brief. And the brief was really literally like, uh, can, you do, can you do a two minute animation for free in five days? And yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course I can. And I did. So this is my little moments of glory. So I will, I will, I will show you the, the final movie and, and the images, so y you know what, what was the final result. So of course it's full of tricks. I mean, there is no, there is no miracle. You, you have to trick. In five days, there is no way you cannot trick. So let's see the, the movie itself. So I did the music as well. It was one full day. And also the little post-processing things, the, the graphics, the...
1.2 kilometers tower over Seoul. Again, without a picture, without Seoul, <laughs> without a model. <laughs> okay, so now you cry normally when you receive that as a brief. And I will show you quickly the, 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 the few images. So, of course, again, it's full of tricks. Huh? It's, uh, but the idea is to create something that has some sort of emotion. Um, I mean, I would consider my job is to create emotion before a project even exists. So I have to I have to do all sorts of choices. So the, the 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 images are reflecting not only the building itself but as well the spirit that the building is into. Uh, so it's a bit uh, it's a bit of complicated work when this one is not great. So I'm going fast. Uh, this one is a bit better. So everything was done in 3D and everything was done in Cinema 4D and Octane. I would have loved to use Redshift, but Cinema 4D did for well. Maxon didn't buy Redshift at that moment, so I had to, I had to use Octane. So I will, I will, I will go on quickly through the, through the different uh, files, or files. Let's see. Uh, the file. So I will quickly open the Rhino file. So what is what is really nice with cinema is that it's again I'm not advertising for cinema I'm li literally using cinema 4D for 25 years and I consider well when the file is in cinema 4D kind of 90% of the job is done uh, to me this the reason the, the most important reason I'm using cinema is because it's never crashing uh, and 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 also I'm a Mac user, so I love softwares that are, I'm using both a PC and a Mac. I'm by, uh, but uh, <laughs> I like as well that it's on the Mac and uh, the, the 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 port to the Mac is is okay. So here you ca you can see the, the you can see the base model. Um, needless to say, there's plenty of uh, yeah. They they just bringing in the buildings will you know make the file a lot heavier. So. This is this is this is where I'm making a lot of fun of the people using 3ds Max. It's because when when I export that from Cinema 4D, from from Rhino in the FBX, and I open it in Cinema 4D, it's kind of instant. Uh, it's another feature that I love with Cinema. Is it's really robust uh, when it comes to importing and exporting files, uh, and especially because I'm doing architecture visualization. Uh, cinema is not really a standard for architecture visualization, but it's it's really robust. It really works, and again, it's really 90% of the job is done when the file is in cinema. I know that when it's in cinema, it's going to be okay. I will not have to freak out. So as you can see, there are a bunch of different uh, uh, different towers. Uh, we and I had the help from my beautiful wife that is here, because she's 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 fantastic at Rhino. Uh, and in five days, I, I, I was really needing a bit of help. But most of it I did alone. Uh, but this, this part I really need. So we, we, we separated the towers to know which kind of towers they were. Uh, it turns out that there were five different towers. And we took only one and when made when made them instances. So it means that this is, this is also a feature that is, uh, well, it's exists in all software. But in cinema, it's visual, which is also something I love. It's that when you work with instances, it's super easy to modify the master and to, to have the... Uh, and when you have something that is as complex as these towers, uh, because they are part green, they are parts uh, made of uh, sun panels, solar panels, they are parts made of... Uh, so it means that at some point, if you just try to import the world geometry in one go, it will not work. From this file, we isolate uh, a few of the towers, and then we brought them into cinema as instances. I would show you, I would show you that. The, the 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 thing is that when you receive file like that, you have to have some sort of you know idea of what you are going to do. So what you know is that in five days, you are not going to be super realistic because then you will not be realistic into thinking that. So you have to have an idea of how we'll handle that problem. So my first idea that it's because it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a sci-fi project. Um, I will have to simplify it, m render the, the size because to me that was the most important because funny enough, I was thinking about the music way before I started to work on the fire was okay. It has to be a bit like Blade Runner kind of feeling. It's really huge. It's um, 1.2 kilometers kind of 
really a high building, so it's even more complicated when you have to render on a movie. Uh, because you you are horizontal. I know it sounds stupid, but that's the, that's okay. So you, you you have to have an idea of what is the method that I will use to represent the building, and it has to be a method that will simplify everything. So the first idea was okay, let's do it like an anime. Let's looking like an animation movie. So the first the first uh, the first idea was to. I um, have my inspiration from uh, animation movies, Japanese animation movies and everything, where everything is kind of stylized. So that, that's one example. I wanted to have people looking at the building. I didn't have time to do that, but I wanted to have characters that would look at the building from underneath like that. Yeah, th this kind of, you know, feeling. So I will show you as well. I did all sort of clouds. They did not make it in the in the final. And funny enough, a few a few weeks before, I worked on a project in Sao Paulo, and uh, I tried this this method as well. So this is a render I did, and it means I I knew all it was possible to do it eventually. So uh, it's really like designing the sky. It's not Mass Effect was rendered like that straight from cinema. Uh, and and to have this kind of simplified vegetation, simplified cloud, simplified everything. So I knew that in five days, then it was possible. Yeah, this, this is another example of uh, of a cinema render. It's straight from the straight from the render, huh? but using Octane. There was also Hugh Ferris, who's kind of the god for for people doing visualization. So this was the kind of feeling I wanted to give to the to the buildings, uh, something that looks enormous, huge, that has this powerful, uh, you know, uh, feeling. The metabolist architecture as well. Uh, sorry, so you can see it here. It's, um, Ferris was uh, working at the beginning of the 20th century. Was, uh, uh, it's part, part of the reason, by the way, I, I'm an architect, but I choose to go with visualizations because of Ferris, because I'm more influenced by drawings, finally, than I am influenced by by buildings built uh, in the end. I think that images are finally more powerful than reality, if you ask me. And there was also this idea of the metabolist architecture that is from the 60s, where you can see a real scale model here. So this was also, by the way, from Harvard as well, a, a, a bit of a, they were a bit playing as well with this idea. It's not an entirely serious project, it is, but there is, there is also a bit of hints on the architecture that is, uh, well, more for architects, but you, that is also important. So it means like, for example, the final movie that you've seen looks a bit like a Super 8 movie, but it was kind of the, the, the whole feeling at the very beginning, okay? And then I came across this image, which is just a subway with the sun in the back. And it was like, okay, sun in the back means that I can show no details or very little details and that suggests that there are details by using an enormous amount of gloom everywhere. Uh, <laughs> normally I don't do that because it's bad, but I, I, I still did it because I'm bad. <laughs> Finally, I'm discovering. Um, so now, Let's 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 no. That's that's has nothing to do with this uh, live demo. Going back to the files. Um, so let me check a bit what I'm talking about. Yes. So now I will start Cinema 4D. Look, it's already open in the back. So it's a very small interface. Of course, I'm working with five different screens, uh, <laughs> but here I'm working with a very small screen. Um, so what you are seeing is actually not the generic Cinema 4D uh, interface. So one thing I love with Cinema 4D is that I can do my own interface. The interface that you are seeing is based on the Lightwave interface because mind you, I'm doing visualization since the 19th century. I mean, I was born in 19 of 1850 and it's like literary century and half I'm doing visualization. So it means that I, I have my little, and I've tried of course all sorts of softwares uh, before I, 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 I came to cinema. I'm using cinema for 25 years now, 20 years uh, now, but I still have things that I like in other softwares. So what I did is I literally rebuilt cinema interface. So it looks like light wave interface. What I like is having the names. So funny enough, I have an office as well with 25 people working uh, we keep working there, and when I have to explain them, or oh, cinema is working, because I'm trying to convert them from Max to cinema. Uh, 
because of the text, everything is easier. So this is, this is to me, I, I cannot work with another interface than this one. The, the, the official cinema interface is meaning nothing to me. I have the name, I have the thing, I even have my, 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 my shortcuts are coming from Zoom somewhere from the 90s that nobody is using anymore. But what is nice is I can literally tailor cinema to my own needs. We have at the studio our own interface. And it's funny enough, doesn't take a lot of time to do. And when I want to customize the comments, they are here. So I, I can do a bit like in Rhino or something, type a comment and find all the comments immediately uh, in the window that are here. Something that no people, very little people using cinema are using, but it's extremely helpful to have this thing. And you know, I can undock these comments if I want. I have them here. Uh, so I can, they can work over here, and when I don't need them anymore, I put them back here, and damn, it works. So it's extremely easy to, uh, to, to, to change the interface and, and, and tailor it through your own needs, okay? I have my own menus, I have my own, so if I want to work in the main thing, it's here, if I want to have the selection, if I want to use the, all the, it's everything is on the first screen, and then I have screens where I can work, it's like different, uh, uh, little ateliers where I can work my m my things. I'm not really a tech guy. I'm a, I'm a geek, but I just want things to get done. So it means I'm not obsessed with technology at all. I'm very straightforward. It's very simple. It's really like whatever works. So this is this is my way of working with cinema. Is whatever works. I probably know like I don't know 15% of the of the software. Uh, uh, capacities, but I'm good enough with it and uh, it seems to work. Now we are going to open the project itself. Here you you have the, the project loaded in cinema. Just give it a few seconds. Actually, I hope it's going to be minutes. So the texture are loading. As you can see, there is like 12 textures. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's the wonder of, uh, of doing 3Ds that finally it's not that complicated. People are trying to tell you that it's complicated. It's not true. It's just that they are, you know, tricking you with uh, complexity, but it's not. So here you can see the, the, the master file. So I will start Octane as well. <laughs> Damn, I'm brave. In this very, very small window. But that I could undock because I can do whatever the f I want with. Oh, I should not say f get live demo. <laughs> Please remove it. Remove what I said. <laughs> I never do live demos for a reason, right? It's just because I swear I'm French, so swearing in English is not at all like swearing in French. In French, I would never do it. But in English, I say mm, all the time. OK, so it is starting. I will do it a bit smaller, hoping that this keypad will work. Wonderful. Um, so it's very small. Let's undock it to prove you that it's possible. So. Here you have, you have really the, the, the file that I've used to do the animation. As you can see, my file is extremely neat and well organized on the right. You are, so this is, this is how I work with cinema. First, I use capital for the things that are finished. So it means that if, 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 if uh, a camera or an object is written in capital, it means that I don't have to touch it anymore. If it's written in small letters, it means that there will be changes on it. So, and this is something that I really love with cinema, is that I see everything. I have I visualized everything, not on this small screen, but when you have two screens, you realize you can visualize things uh, quite well. So you have the tag system that permits you to know which camera is at which, which um, thing. You have the little lights here that you can see. There's a lot of light because there were eight sequences. That this is, well, actually nine sequences. Uh, so there are nine light. I know that I could have done it differently. There are the takes that are supposed to do that, but it's too complicated for me. So I use the old school way, which is, you know, uh, here you can see all the cloners that I've used for the, for the plants. There's a lot of plants. Actually, a lot, lot of plants. There are even little eagles because uh, uh, birds are good. Birds are nice, and you cannot really do a, a project without a few birds. Here you have the towers. So actually, four different types of towers. And then you have the instances. We are just a duplicata of the towers. Well, some sort of uh, uh, 
Well, you know what instances are. You know, right? <coughs> yes, you know. Okay. Um, and then the bridges, and then the terrain, and then all sorts of stuff. So, the, 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 the complex thing into that, so I will just go to the, normally, voila. here you can see that's the editor camera. Voila, now, now, now you see better. So you will see where, where the problem is, is that I literally remodeled Seoul entirely. So there was, there were, there was, uh, there was a model, but the model was incomplete, so there is a very nice plugin from Paul Everett called Dem Earth, so I, I, which permits to actually rip entire entire part of Google or Bing or something and then apply a texture on it. So I will show you how I did that. Um, so that that was point number one. Is like you you know that with the size of the buildings, there is no way you are not going to show the city because you cannot do close up constantly. So you will have to do the real thing, which is showing a site one kilo one hundred kilometers around. Just this is absolutely terrible when you think about it. It's like okay, wh we will see one hundred kilometers around, and I have nothing, and I have five days. Turns out it's not that complicated. Finally, because you can you can have the picture from Google. So I will show you. Oh, oh, it's done. The idea is this one. You have a map that will do the center of the project. Well, the, the towers are here. And then I've downloaded a map that is doing the 100 kilometers around. Well, not 100, but like more like 50 kilometers around. And because I cannot have the same density in terms of polygons uh, all around, because it will just kill uh, kill the machine. The idea is super simple. Here you can see the, you can see how it works. In the middle you have the iris picture. All around you have the uh, you have the picture uh, that is uh, of uh, lower resolution. So it means that when I close up, I have a lot of details. Back in the thing doesn't kill the RAM, doesn't kill the uh, doesn't kill cinema. So it's super easy uh, to do. So here you can see the uh, you can see the whole city. And if I zoom out. Thanks to Octan, real time. I have the entire. So they are duplicated and everything because I know that from a far distance nobody will see anything. It will be it will be just uh, uh, extremely blurry, like you've seen in the movie. And I know as well that because the movie was going to look like a super eight uh, super eight style, I will not have to think too much. But I have to give the impression that it is uh, that it is complex. Then there is the problem of the buildings. So as you can see, Seoul is unfortunately made of a lot of buildings. And of course, I don't have a picture for these buildings. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not completely insane. I'm not going to map every building. So what you do when you don't have time? But you do something super simple. So you split the roof from the building because this is something. So on the roof here, as you can see, there is the IIO view. I will try to have a better, a better. Here you have the aerial view, so it means that I have the top of the building and I manage to make the picture and the, 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 the 3D aligned. So from top, it looks exactly like Seoul. But then, when because I knew that I was going to have shots like that, then I have to create texture for all this building. Okay, not a big deal. I was born in 1850, so I know, my, I know the tricks for that. So... What I did is that I created a very long strip of building and then I mapped it cubic all over the city and hope for the best. And funny enough, it works super well. It looks like all the buildings are different. Well, they're a bit sad buildings, this I have to say, but it's moving, it's an animation, it's okay. I mean, nobody will really, and it's for free, so nobody can really complain about it. Huh? But when you, yeah, I can do way longer than that. And you can, um, and because, because I'm a bit finicky, I choose as well to have, so you put that in the specular, and it means that on top of that you have the little windows, you know, doing lights and everything. It's the stupidest texture I've ever done. You have black and white, so it gives the impression that it's glass, and you have a texture that is all over the city. I'm not kidding. This is exactly what I did. All these buildings are done with the, the strip that you've seen. Sorry about that. They are all done with the strip that you've seen. 
And I did an entire city with that. Look, one, st one strip of buildings, okay? <sighs> Sometimes I like myself. Not often, not often, because I'm but whatever. See, it gives the impression that it's uh, that you have an entire city. So okay, so this is done. Now I have another problem. Damn, there is a river. And what are rivers? They are reflective, and this is not funny. So, plan A, I model a river. Plan B, I use the exact same trick as the as the as the building. So, what I will do. I'm enjoying like demo finally. Ah, that's the mountains. Mountains are cool as well. Let me show you mountains things. So we start oh, city and river. So the river. So I took this. You, you remember this picture that I took, right? The, this, this very large picture. Okay. So now I did exactly like I did for the glass of the buildings. I did a black and white texture, and this texture I put in the specular or in the reflection, depending on what you want to call it. So suddenly. Because of that, I have the picture that is looking like the city, and then I overlay that in the texture so it gives the impression that the, there will be the reflection. And I have a summer knife, reflective river, because I know that the reflective river will matter. Uh, you, 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 see, you see why, huh? I mean, uh, I don't like to... to, 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 to uh, ha, ha. Uh, you see the river here? Yeah, now it's reflective. With just one single texture. One single trick. You can see the, you can see the, uh, you can see the reflection of the tower as well. I guess you can. So I don't want to advertise for Octane, but Octane kicks us. Voilà, you can see the reflection. You can see the reflection here. So it's just overlaid a black and white on top of the of the original uh, of the original picture. Okay. So here now I have kind of a file that I can really render. The different the different uh, towers are instances. So you mean I change one, I change all the other ones. I have a reflective river. I have an entirely an entire city that looks a bit convincing. All I need is a nice sun. I mean that's that's the that's the that's the whole point. So when you have a <laughs> when you have a problem, you choose a very low sun because it makes very very long shadows, and very long shadows are really nice. Everybody is liking long shadows. So this is exactly what I did here. Is that I had very long shadows. Uh, it's like a early morning uh, kind of um, thing. So I will go back to the original image. So what I'm also doing is that I need joy from time to time. And, and joy is, I, I, when, I'm, when I'm working, it's a bit like, okay, I do something really not funny and then I will, you know, make myself a bit happy by doing something really funny. And what is funny? The funny is the bloom. Bloom is funny. Bloom is good. Bloom is what you need. So from this terrible image that, has, that is really literally making no sense, now I'm going to... Oh, this is a lot of joy. And this is all you know that you are going to do it because you are going to trick it constantly. <laughs> you are going to use the bloom, you are going to use the fake buildings, you are going to have the reflective river, you are going to do all sort of, all, all sort of stuff that will, you know, trick, the, trick the, 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 the people to think that there's way more details than there, there actually is. Um, there are a few other little tricks here. <laughs> Come back here. I'm not afraid, it's never crashing. I mean, I can do pretty much everything I want. Always good, look. Oh, go back here. There you go. So, the problem is also that uh, because it's very wide, you, uh, I'll go back to the editor camera, uh, and there is no way I'm going to use, to use fog, for example, because fog is very, very RAM consuming, it's very, and I wanted to have the render time in between 30 seconds to two minutes per frame. Normally, when you render animations, you can consider that between 20 and one hour per frame is, is okay, okay? The idea here was to render on one single machine at 30 seconds to two minutes per frame, okay? Which I did. So it means that I have to give up on a lot, 
lots of uh, you know nice features that softwares are providing so okay there must be mountains in the background so instead of doing fog that will give the depth what you do is that you just take a texture of uh, something that looks like a mountain there you go that's the mountains i've used in the back you duplicate it three times on on um what do you call the circle or well, the uh, ah damn it you know like something that is wrong and you make all the textures more transparent so it gives the impression of depth because you know that uh, a mountain in the back is having this little you know it's blue it blends with the sky and everything so when you don't have time to actually uh, do uh, use the fog because the fog will have killed the render time then you, you can see it here uh, the mountain system <laughs> in the back you see the mountains here they are absolutely not looking like realistic mountains but they are three transparent but when I go back to my when I go back to my uh, image well they do the trick huh? I don't know if there is one image where you can see it. yeah they are here so it gives the impression of depth and it takes literally seconds to render so this was this was really the 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 am I talking too much now? Uh, this was literally so this one file is is a trick. What is really nice is that I'm I'm working with an entire city. I'm working with a, a terrain that is actually accurate. The city is accurate as well. And by the way, it's, this is really Seoul. But I cannot handle to make it too detailed. So by using tricks, I have something that looks actually kind of very convincing and with a few post-production effect uh, that you can apply afterwards, then you, you have something that actually uh, looks, looks kind of okay. And then to do the animation, this is actually extremely simple. Uh, I have eight cameras, nine cameras, because I had to add a little, a little something. The only, the only, my only little joy was to have the eagles turning around because that was the whole point of the towers that they are, they are supposed to be a support for ecological uh, things. So they normally it should have been full of plants and everything, but this as well, uh, I could not afford in terms of uh, polygon and render time. So it's actually just very simple textures that are applied to the different panels. I can show it to you by zooming in. So I'm going back to the editor camera. Yep. Yeah, I'm loving live demos. You're really brave when you do live demos. And now I'm really lost in my file. Because I don't have the proper glasses to... Where are the towers? You see, it's really fluid. You, as you can see, the river is like crazy. But in the middle, it's all okay. So I don't know where I am. So what I will do is that I will... Because I have my own... I have my own... Uh, I have my own shortcut and I'm not used at all to this I will just okay so it doesn't work because this is actually not my computer so I'm a bit lost in my file now you see the towers somewhere uh, they're here they are right in the middle okay thank you so ugh. also something that I love with Octane, unfortunately, is that it's so fast. <laughs> uh, here you can see you can see how I handle the panels. So this there they, they were panels with a lot of different, a lot of different greenery, but I choose to 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 have just a few textures that will distinguish one from from the other. But because it's moving, because uh, because I'm it's it's far distance shots, I don't have to detail it too much. There are much more details in the detailed in the in the images because here I had the time to create proper scatter uh, vegetation plants and everything but here because it's moving it's far away I mean when it's 1.2 kilometers you you really don't see details so I choose to never go too close to the to the uh, there are other little tricks as well is that the the, the the bridge is having all sort of trees as well so this is this is nice to be really old like me is that I have I have trees from the 90s that are done by Marlin Studio. <laughs> they are trees that literally have like 55 polygons and, and and one texture, and I use them all the time because I can I can literally create the the the, the a jungle 
uh, without using a, any RAM. From a distance, they do absolute, absolute wonders. You, can, you cannot find shitty models like that anymore. And it's too bad <laughs> because they do, they do so much. <laughs> they work so well. People would be ashamed to sell them. That they should not because they, they are little wonders. So I also have a lot of, uh, and this is where it's really complicated, is that they are all sorts of different here on the river uh, because that's the whole point of the wall tower. There is also a lot of green, uh, green ecological system here that you can see where each plant has been carefully chosen as you see them I'm sorry I'm going a bit fast but um, here you can see all this so this was super funny because they, 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 they are serious people so they they had a point clouds for every different essence of pla of plants we converted that point cloud into triangles and then I literally used to the triangles and put some texture on them and move them a little in, in, in wire and it gives the impression that it's a very dense vegetation. Well, actually, it's just a couple of textures on top of triangles. But again, from a distance, it looks perfectly okay. Also, on the picture, I've, I've overlaid the original drawing from the, uh, from the, uh, from the architect. So that means that you see from a distance it looks like it's really complicated but actually if you look closer it's just a bunch of triangles and little bubbles with the same ugly texture as the marlin trees <laughs> because the texture was already in the file and it looks like it's really complicated but it costs nothing here i'm working i mean thi this 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 computer is having six gigabytes of vram and I'm having the project, the entire project, the city and everything render in real time in Octane. I mean, I'm sure Redshift is doing the same, but it's a very, very low computer, a very slow computer. Well, it's an okay computer, but it's not like a very powerful machine. And I mean, it works. I mean, this is, this, this is, this is what I'm saying from the very beginning. It's whatever works. And this is, this is why I love cinema so much is because when it is there, I know that I will f finally render and it, it will be okay. Believe it or not, there was no dramas. It literally rendered every frame into 30 seconds and a minute. As you can see, well, I will not render, render an animation in front of you because that will be, <laughs> that will be criminal. But uh, like for example, this one, I will try, I will try to, nah, not do that. But I will try to move the, ah, you. The interface is a bit screwed here in the back. Uh, voila. So I will just animate. You can see the eagles are moving here. Yeah? That's my little moment of glory, moving eagles. Yeah. Like I had time to do that. Yeah, I did. So the sun is also animated. So what I will do is that I will just hide the sun here. This is zero 03. So this visual, this visual, um, this visual aspect of uh, of cinema is really really something i'm enjoying because i'm seeing everything constantly on the right in in, in max for example when you want to see your cameras you have to call a special window and you have to remember where, what the name of your camera is yeah i can i can just see everything it's like a it's like a battle plan i have the whole battle plan in front of me and i can i can i can do literally whatever i want we'll just put it on top here voila um so here, with the bloom, with everything, I mean, I can, I can, I can literally render real time. These gigantic towers and the eagles. It's amazing. I'm amazed. Well, I'm, I'm happy. I'm easily happy as well. I tend to. Yeah, y nobody is really liking you, so you have to like yourself a little. So I'm kind of patting myself. Uh, you, you did, you did good, my friend. You did, you did good. Okay, so I completely I was having a lot of notes, super interesting, uh, with uh, lots of details about uh, gathering and creating assets, the the cloners, the tests, the unleashing the bloom, showing the previews. So yeah, uh, the, the the thing is that the the the, the, the moments, the, the real moments where I was. That that actually I, I felt that was going to. I will show you a bit of the assets. So the, here comes the, <laughs> the marlin trees. You have 50, 50 different trees in fifteen megabytes. Can you believe it? 
Look at that. Look at beautiful trees. No. Look at that trees. I mean, 50 trees, 15 megabytes. Now a single tree is one gigabyte. Even a palm tree is one gigabyte. I mean, who, who's using? Hop, oh, marlin trees. You do the entire rainforest. Scatter, cloner. Here you go. Entire rainforest done in a done in cinema. So I'll close that. No, because this is not what I want. And ah, marlin trees go away. That's my interest. Okay, that's that's no. no. Okay, so that's the assets. Yeah, the vegetal wall. The vegetal wall is my favorite. So on the images, you've seen the the, the uh, something that we're looking actually like plants. So to do a vegetal wall, it's super easy. First, you take a plane, and then you make it editable. And then you create a variance. I could do it live, but then I choose to be a bit lazy here. So you take a plane with, let's say, 20 by 20 uh, squares. Then you, you make it editable, because in cinema, you have, uh, when it's a primitive thing, you have to make it turn into polygons. Then you insert. Uh, Extrude in inner, extrude inner, so it will create with a variance. Okay, I could do it for real, but uh, I'm afraid it would not work. But I will, I can, I can try. And then you use the matrix extrudes, and here you go. You have super nice plants. And this is taking literally one minute to do. Uh, the reason why I prefer to use uh, a, a model like this one of a, a texture is because I'm quite sure that it will not flicker. Textures are, uh, well, models are safer in terms of flickering finally than, than texture where you can have uh, something weird. So this is also, I'm using really the basic tool of cinema because I know that I will have exactly what I want extremely fast. If you are, if you want, I can even show you that, but uh, it's, 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 it's really, hey, let's, after all, uh, that's the point of light demo. Let me show you how you do that. So I have a plane, let me go on F1. Extra dinner. There you go. Uh, so I've selected all the polygons. I don't see uh, uh, variance here. It's fifty percent, so it means that it will all be different. Do that, so you can see that it's inside a little. They are all a bit different. And then I will do the matrix extrudes. I will apply. There you go. <laughs> Takes one second. And what is nice is that I can I can still change it. I can still I can still grow it or not grow it I can go in this direction or not I mean I can I can bend them more I can I can I can move them I never move them oh wow so you can animate that you can keyframe everything and what is nice is that when you create an object in cinema you still have the capacity to change everything all the time this is also something that I love with cinema it's a bit complex when you have to model architecture but in the end you you kind of gain time because you have the capacity of changing everything like a boolean is never a boolean a boolean is just the idea of a boolean so it means that you can still change everything it's absolutely brilliant when you have to work because you can make mistakes and not freak out about them it's not like it's finished when I started doing 3d I was doing zoom it was one level of undo so you really had to think carefully about what you're doing here I felt like it's freedom so this is how I created the vegetation for the for the for the images. Maybe I can show you the the, the, the results. We've seen that at the very beginning. Damn, it goes fast. I'm not even finished. Uh, I didn't show you the previews. Ah, I didn't show you the animatic. I will do that tomorrow then. Yeah, let's see. Let's see all the all the all the all the vegetation. Uh, was looking that maybe from a from a closer angle yeah, from, from this one. So what you've seen is a cloner of the vegetation. Then it's, it's, it's not entirely noticeable, but here, the thing that I showed you has been multiplied a million times over the, uh, on, the ta on, the, on the towers, so you, you can see them. Of course, I did four or five different, because it took me literally one minute to create. Uh, so I did four or five different, then I overlaid a bit of uh, texture. The clouds I also did in 3D. So you take a picture of a cloud, you make a transparent texture, you put it on a plane, and you stick the plane on top of the towers, and then you have a very decent, uh, without using any sorts of VRAM, uh, kind of making clouds. So th th these images are 
kind of except for the 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 effect that is overlaid on them is taking minutes to render and a bit of photoshop and you have something that is actually kind of okay i think it's kind of okay okay so the, it, the, it was it was my first live demo in 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 years i think it's time now that i stop uh, i could do another hour because i probably skipped like 90% of what I wanted to say. So there is a second, I do the same, the same presentation tomorrow at 10. So I will try to be more organized tomorrow. Voila.